What's going on YouTube? Johnny from JohnnyTheMarketer.com here back again with another video and in this video I'm going to be giving you a really cool interview with a Pinterest uh, pro pretty much. She is amazing at Pinterest. So I want to get her on this channel on my channel because uh, Pinterest is something that I think is undervalued and something that a lot of people are not utilizing to its full potential. Um, so I want to bring a pro, a seasoned pro who is using it um, every single day to talk about it. So um, how are you doing, Kara? Good. How are you? I'm great. So Pinterest, before we get into Pinterest, right? Like, how did you find Pinterest? And before we talk about the strategy, I want to know, like, how did you find it? And were you using something else to um, drive traffic? And also tell us a little about what you're doing with Pinterest. Yeah, so I kind of came to find, I mean, I was a regular just user on Pinterest, but not for business, of course. And so, I mean, I knew a little bit about Pinterest, but I didn't know too much of the business side of Pinterest. So when I um, after shortly after having our daughter, um, I was really bored at home and I kind of just need something to do. So that's where I started my blog and I was like, crap, well, great. I have a blog, but how in the crap do I get people to my blog? Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, why don't I just give Pinterest a try? So I signed up for my Pinterest account and that's kind of basically how I found Pinterest. Pinterest is my main traffic source. Um, it is my main go-to because it is doing so well for me. And I don't really use any other ones that much, and maybe yeah. I should, but Pinterest is just what's working for me and what has worked for so many other people. And I didn't, I, before I even got on Pinterest, I didn't even understand really the power that Pinterest has because, you know, the first thought you think of Pinterest is, oh, DIY or gardening or weddings, you know, like uh, yeah. more like women things. And so people don't really understand that Pinterest can be great for any kind of niche to drive free traffic to your site. So that's basically how I found it. Nice. So uh, can you give us a little breakdown of like what your blog is and like just so people know like what you're what you are doing in terms of that aspect? Yeah, for sure. So my blog is a pregnancy slash parenting blog. So it's more geared towards first time moms um, going through pregnancy, obviously for the first time, um, because it's kind of totally unknown. Um, and you don't know kind of what symptoms or what really to expect. So my blog is really specifically designed to help first time moms get through their pregnancy and know that they're not alone with symptoms or feelings that they're feeling. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. So how long has the blog been up and running? So I started it in November of 2017. So it's been about a year and coming up on a half. Nice. And all no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh. year and a half. <laughs> yeah. So all your traffic is primarily from Pinterest then? Uh-huh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I do get some from Google, but it's not, I mean, it's like Pinterest is like boom, like huge, and then Google's pretty small. But yeah, Pinterest is my main traffic source. Interesting. So um, how, how many monthly hits, if you don't mind me asking, are you getting from Pinterest, do you think? So my, <clears throat> so my overall account, it's kind of broken down differently in how Pinterest does it. Pinterest... Um, goes over because not when you're set up a Pinterest account, not all the pins on your account are going to be yours. If they right. are, then Pinterest is going to shut you down. So Pinterest yeah. counts for a total of, you know, everyone coming to your site or everyone coming to my account, both for my pins and other people's pins. So I'm getting um, my latest stats and I checked this morning, I'm getting 1.9 million monthly views um, just to my account. And then from that, I'm getting about 20,000 people a week um, or 20, about 20 to 30,000 a week coming to my site. Wow, that's really awesome. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's really Thank you. cool. Um, so let's talk about beginners. So like, you know, you said you when you first got started, you kind of just kind of came across Pinterest. You didn't really know the power of it, like you said. Um, so like for anyone out there who may not understand how Pinterest works or maybe a little um, discouraged or they think it's kind of not for them, how can a beginner, you know, go into Pinterest and start using it to a uh, really powerful effect, I guess, a, yeah, powerful effect like like you are doing? Yeah, so for anyone who's like just starting out or um, even if they do have an account on Pinterest, but they're not getting a lot and kind of want to start focusing more on it, um, the key is to number one, you're going to want to make sure you have a business Pinterest account. Um, that's important because you'll be able to see all your analytics. If you don't have one like a personal Pinterest account, they don't show those. 
So you're going to want to make sure you have a business one. And then the next step is really, it's really comes down to keywording. Um, so you're going to, whatever your niche is. So obviously mine's the pregnancy parenting niche. And so a lot of my keywords are to do with pregnancy, like first trimester, second trimester, morning sickness, you know, those type of common ones. So you want to just make sure you're keywording, keywording your description that you have on your account. And then um, I always tell, you know, I mean, Tucker will, my husband will ask me, you know, hey, this, my, one of my clients wants to set up Pinterest. How can I help him? And, you know, the first things you want to do is set up a wide variety of boards. Um, now you want to set up boards that where you can take one pin and pin that pin to multiple boards so that because Pinterest really doesn't like you spamming the same pin over and over to a board. Right. So you want to make sure you set up a wide variety of different topics that um, a specific pin can go into. Um, so once you get those up um, and Pinterest, I mean, I just want to say here, Pinterest is, it does take a little bit longer to set up it um, and start seeing results, but the lasting effect of a pin is so much longer than any other social media site. That's why Pinterest is awesome. Um, so when you're setting up your boards, you want to have at least 15 to 20 pins per board, and that's your own as well as other people in your niche. Um, and then from there, then you'll be able to start seeing some traffic kind of pull in, pull in from Pinterest, going to your site. Um, and that's really kind of the basics of getting started is just I would start off by manual pinning to your boards to kind of sit down daily throughout the day and just, okay, I'm going to pin this one here, this one here, go to your home Pinterest, because then by the time, I mean, it takes about a month for Pinterest to kind of start to recognize what your niche is about. Okay. And then it will start to share your pins with people who are interested in what your niche is. So that's kind of the basics of setting up Pinterest. Wow. That's really, really awesome. I'm learning so much. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> how many boards do you think a person should start out with or does it does it matter so i would recommend starting off with at least about i mean you can do 10 you can start off with 10 boards just like if you're starting like from scratch like you have not even been on pinterest whatsoever i would start with at least get at least 10 boards up if you have a pinterest account that's getting some traffic and you have some boards but not a lot i mean i would go to about 20 boards, go until you have 20 boards set up and then just keep pinning to those boards. But for a complete newbie, at least have a good solid 10 boards and start building those boards up. And then as you, as you build up those boards, continue to add more boards. Okay. Awesome. That's really good advice. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. um, I know Pinterest is more about like images and it's really graphical. So what do you do in terms of images? And, um, if someone's not as artistic or they, you know, think they can't do it, how do you suggest they could overcome that? So that was, and it's funny because that was something I was running into when I first started my account is I was like, how do I create pins, you know, with headlines that are going to get traction also? Because I mean, I've browsed on Pinterest and seen, I'm like, oh man, I really wish I could just help this person who created this pin because I know if I change it and help them just change a little things, they could get more traffic from it. Right. And so the biggest thing I found is go on Pinterest go to the topic that you're interested in. So say like gardening or, you know, real estate or how to make money, whatever it is, whatever your niche is, go search in the search bar on Pinterest and see what other pins are in that niche and find, I, I even, you can create secret boards inside Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And so when I first started, I created a secret board, which means no one can see it but yourself. And I just named it pins that I was inspired by or pins that I liked. And so I went through my niche topic and saved pins to that board of pins that really just kind of stuck out to me. And then I'll go back through and be like, okay, why did that pin stick out to me? Is it the colors? Is it the image? Is it the length? Because Pinterest, they are kind of finicky um, on what their pin lengths are. They just changed it to, I mean, you used to be able to do like super long pins. Now yeah. they just change up to where you have to do shorter ones. And so you kind of have to stay up to date with that. But that was being able to see what other pins people have created that are in your niche will give them a will give you a good you know base laying of how to create your pins. Now I just use Canva to create my pins. It's a free software um, and it's super simple. And they um, Canva even has uh, a pin template as far as like um, 
sizes. Right. And so that's where basically I just go is create them there. And then, like I said, I just had found pins that I really liked. And from people like I would even not, I wouldn't even go as far as to check out who whose pin that account belongs to. Right. So then you can see, okay, because I mean, you don't want to be modeling pins after an account that ha doesn't have a lot of traffic on it. You want to do it after big people. And so right. Right. I went and found, you know, pregnancy pins that were just exploding and I kept seeing them over and over again. So I was like, okay, what is up? I keep seeing this pin. So I went and checked out the account. And the account had tons and tons of views. So I was like, awesome. I'm going to, I want to model my pins after that pin that I just saved. And so yeah. that's really basically where I started. And then, I mean, I've had like probably three or four different designs of pins that I've rotated through. Um, but once you find, you know, a pin design that you really like, that really sticks with your branding and, you know, who you are, stick with that design. And then it makes it so much simpler to create pins in the future because you can really just drag and drop okay that's really yeah yeah you always want to I always tell people like just do what's working like and mm -hmm. I guess it's the same thing like you just want to kind of copy the big players and kind of put your own twist on it yeah exactly don't try to reinvent the wheel if it's already there just model it after your brand right exactly awesome 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 so um I know I did uh when I when I used to drop ship I used to drop ship products um and on Shopify and I was looking at Pinterest Back in the day, like 2017, um, not for organic, but for paid. Have you ever used their paid ad advertising? I tried it a little bit. Um, after I had my blog or had my Pinterest count up about for eight months, and I was like, you know what? I just want to see. I want to see if I'm going to get good results from paid traffic. And if not, I'm just going to call it quits. And so yeah. I did try to run it for, I ran it for a few weeks. And surprisingly I was getting for me personally and this is just my brand but for me personally I was getting better click-through rates better um, engagement rates just better everything across the board by organically doing my pins than paid pins okay. um and so I mean if you I've seen really big kind of well-known companies do paid pins and that makes more sense but for you know a just a blogger type person for me personally it made more sense just to do my pins organically instead of paying for my pin because my um limit was being reached quicker than i was getting results from that pin so that yeah. was the only time i tried paid pins after that i was like you know what i'm just gonna focus on organic and i've done great organically right so how much how do you, so it seems like pinterest does like a long like you said it's like long lasting so how many hours or minutes do you spend per day on Pinterest, do you find? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> Pinterest, well, first off, the life expectancy of a pin is seven plus months. It can just, it lasts forever. Like I have pins from 2017 when I first started my blog that are still going viral. Um, and so that's really, that's one thing I also love about Pinterest, but what I do is I spend, I mean, I do some manual pinning in the morning or even in afternoon after I put my daughter down for her nap. And I don't spend a ton of time um, manual pinning. I probably spend about five, 10 minutes. And that's just pinning um, some pins from the homepage and then like repinning some of my pins. Um, but what I, my main um, go to is called Tailwind, and that is Pinterest's own software, um, pinning software that they created. There was a software called Board Booster, but Pinterest got that one shut down. And so, be safe than sorry, and just use Pinterest um, yeah. own created software. So I use Tailwind, and it actually just automatically pins, uh, pins to all my boards and all my accounts. And so, I do have to go in. I usually do it a week out and so at the end of each week I'll go back in to my Telwin account and into Pinterest and just repin and just schedule pins to my Telwin account and then um then each week it'll just continue to send out that way I'm not having to spend a whole bunch of time on Pinterest personally but I do try to balance it out between manual pinning and using the scheduler because Pinterest does recognize when you're manual pinning and when you're using a scheduler because they did just rule out that they would like content creators to 
act more like a user than just someone trying to promote their content out there. Right. And so that means like getting on there and like scrolling, clicking into pins, going to other people's blog posts, like being like an actual user instead of just pinning pins. So that's what I do. I try, like I said, I try to do about five, 10 minutes every day, um, manual pinning. And then I just have my um, Tailwind system running for me. Nice. Okay. So mm -hmm. Tailwind is something that, um, would you recommend like if someone's a beginner, you probably want them to kind of do it organically so they get the feel of it and then you know, once you understand how, you know, the pinning works, repinning, boards work, all that stuff, then maybe you can move on to Tailwind, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're just starting out, um, I I even waited. I think I didn't get Tailwind until I was about four or five months into pinning on Pinterest. Mm. Um, so, yeah, if you're just starting out, wait to get Tailwind um, until – you really start seeing your analytics come in from Pinterest because, like I said, it does take about a month or two for Pinterest to finally kind of recognize what you're doing. Um, and then from there, once you kind of get in the habit, you have your boards build up, which within each board, excuse me, within each board, you have a good amount of pins in each board. Then I would recommend using Tailwind to continue to automate what you're already doing. Um, and the nice thing about Tailwind is that it takes so, and, th and this is the other thing why I waited is because Tailwind will analyze your Pinterest account and automatically create a system or a scheduled um, system for you automatically based on the activity and say, and so it'll show up great and say, hey, this time at 1030 a.m., you're getting the most active users on your account. Would you like to schedule pins during this time? So you just click. And so, um, but if you wait, if you don't wait long enough, you really don't have enough for Tailwind to go off of. Right. And so it continues to adjust. So yeah, wait for a little bit. And then, like I said, as once you start building up your account, then get Tailwind just to continue to automate your account. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. That's really cool that they actually show you like 10.30 a.m. It's, you know, go time. Post that. At oh, that. yeah. Oh, I love it. And, and it's also great because then you know, because you obviously want to be pinning your own content at the times where you get the most users on your Pinterest account. Right. And that's one thing I've loved about Tailwind is, is I can go in and I always schedule my own pins first because then it's like, okay, I, I, I want my pins to take up the best time slots. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'll fill in the gaps with other people's pins. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's that seems like a really good strategy, guys. She just kind of laid down some uh, golden nuggets right there if you didn't catch it. <laughs> but um, I guess that's, that's a little later down the line if you're just beginning. So for someone that um, has, because it's funny, I was at, I was at FHL, uh, Fun Hacking Live, and I was in an Uber, and the Uber driver, we would just start talking, and she was like, what do you do? I told her I'm an entrepreneur, like, I, you know, I work for myself, and she was like, wow, like, I really would love to start, like, some type of blog, um, and, you know, she was talking about how she, her and her husband, um, they always had this dream of living on a boat and, like, having a blog that would translate and show people like how it's done and you know maybe even do some um, boat tours and have people stay on the boat so you can like see how it feels to live on a boat type of thing mm -hmm. um and I, I wish I kind of knew, knew this information like um uh, how to get traffic because she was like how do you get people and I was like you have to give value and you have to do all these things but mm -hmm. um one question she had was how do you monetize um and at that time I just told her affiliate marketing but I'm sure there's other ways. So like, how do you monetize your, your blog? And like, how do you get those translate those viewers that are coming from pictures into dollars? Yeah, for sure. That is probably one of the biggest questions that are actually asked. Um, in a lot of my blogging Facebook groups, that is probably the number one question. Like people have had their blog up for years and now they're just like, I'm like working myself tired because I'm not getting, I'm not making anything from this. So how do I do that? So yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what I've personally done is at first I did use Google um, ads and I just had Google ads be placed on my site. Now you don't make like bank from Google ads. Like it's barely like a penny from each user. user. Um, but I worked my way up and I actually got on a company called Mediavine. There's a company called Mediavine and a company called AdThrive. Now, those are the two biggest um, ad companies. Now, what they do is they work with a whole bunch of different um, like ad people that will place ads on your site and you'll get 
money from letting them place ads on your site. Now, right. that was probably the quickest way for me to monetize my blog as long as well as affiliate marketing. I did do some and I'm still doing some. Um, but getting on media by now, you do have to have certain qualifications to get onto these things. I was able to get on media vine seven months after starting my blog. Um, and so you have to have about, I think it's, what was it? I think it's 30,000 users in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was able to hit that in seven, eight months. And so then I got on, but ever since I was able to get on, they just automatically, and I loved media vine. They're awesome. Um, ever since I was using them, they just put, and it's so simple. They just put ads on your site. They put ads in your blog post and you really don't have to worry about it. And then you just see money coming in. So I was making about three to $400 a month just from media vine. And then probably a few hundred from my affiliate links. And now I'm actually in the process of taking off media vine because I'm starting to watch my own product on my um, pregnancy blog and so that one's kind of taken off but for someone who's you know kind of starting out and just wants to start monetizing their blogs I would definitely recommend trying to hit the numbers of what Mediavine or AdThrive require so that you can get on because their payouts are pretty big and if you have consistent traffic coming to your site you're going to see income coming in like I've had $20 days I've had $30 days you know so it really those are the two biggest ones I would say to start monetizing your blog, um, as well as affiliate marketing, because affiliate marketing is awesome. I mean, my go-to is just Amazon, um, but I also work with a lot of other, other companies that I place ads on, or sorry, not ads, affiliate links on. Um, and then I would say my kind of third and most recommended way is create your own product. You're always, always going to make more creating your own stuff because then you get 100% of what you make. Like I'm splitting even with being on Mediavine, I'm still getting a cut of what I could be getting. And so, you know, make your own product. And that's what I said I'm doing. I'm launching my product this weekend on my site. And so that's going to be nice because I'm going to get a full 100% of whatever I make. You're not having to split it. And so even if it's something small, like I've seen people um, put together just like ebooks of, you know, some sort of template that they have or like hacks or start a membership program. Like I know this one blog company that they have a membership program on how they're able to travel the world, how they get sponsorships for from companies and their memberships, $5 a month, super right. basic, but they're making a ton of money from it. Right. So those are kind of the steps I would take um, as far as monetizing someone's blog. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's definitely, I, I, I definitely agree with creating your own product, um, especially when, you know, you get a hundred percent of everything. Mm -hmm. um, yes, definitely. So, um, speaking on your own product, how is that? You're you're launching it this weekend or next week? Yeah. So we're we're in the process of launching it now. Um, we're just trying to um, settle some things with Media Media Vine right now, so that I can continue to promote my product. But it is done, um, and we are planning to get it up on my site this weekend nice. and so we're super excited about it i've been working on it for six months yeah six wow. months now so i'm like yay i finally get to get it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's so cool because then you get to see like if people are you know you get to see like the sales come in right like all that mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. validation that what you're doing is it's you know it's good it's good stuff so yeah uh, that's really awesome. Congrats on that as well. Thanks. Um, I think you shared so many cool tips about Pinterest. Um, I believe that it's a program or uh, one of those social media networks that a lot of people are just not utilizing. And I think more and more marketers will transition into that. Um, and I think that reason is because Pinterest is, it's quote unquote uh, female dominated, but I think mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity um, especially because the marketing world or the world that I'm in, it's a lot of males, right? So like males don't think Pinterest is where we should be, but mm -hmm. it's exactly mm -hmm. where we should be, right? Like there's so many, Oh yes. It, it's so many, there's so many people out there that, you know, would love to see the stuff that we're, we're doing as well. Um, so uh, thank you so much for actually, you know, shedding light on this topic. It's really awesome that, yeah. yeah. So, so my pleasure. So <laughs> where can people find you? So you can find me, I mean, 
let me think. If you want to check out my, I mean, you're feel free to check out my pregnancy or my um, Pinterest account. It's called Dollar Mommy Club. Okay. Um, feel free to check it out so you can, if you're starting your account, that's, and that was another thing I did. I went to other people's account and saw how they set it up. And then I just kind of modeled mine after that. So um, again, it's just Dollar Mommy Club is my Pinterest account. And then if you, my Instagram is the Forwarded Family. Okay. Um, that's just my, that's where I kind of share myself and uh, the things I'm doing. Um, and I do have a Pinterest course. Um, so if people are interested in that, they're more than welcome um, to check that out as well. It's called Pinterest Secrets. Okay. Um, so, and it's not super promoted because I'm still working. I'm still continually updating it um, just because what I put in there, Pinterest is great for beginners, but then Pinterest just totally like flipped 180 degrees um, and changed some things. So now I got to go back and, you know, continually add to it to make it better. But Absolutely. if you're wanting to learn more on how to start your Pinterest account, definitely check out Pinterest Secrets. Sweet. Okay, guys, you heard her. Go follow her. Check out her Pinterest account. Definitely get some tips from there. Even if it's not in your niche, you can still see how she's doing mm -hmm. things. Kind of model it. You can change up the images, change out the, the graphic and the fonts, but the, the concept is still there. So definitely go check that out. Um, and then check out Pinterest Secrets. As she said, it's not as promoted right now, but she's revamping it. It's going to be better than ever. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, and if you are not on Pinterest, definitely, definitely take a look because it's definitely something that I'm going to be looking into myself. Um, definitely going to be revamping my own blog and definitely getting on Pinterest to drive some organic traffic. So definitely, uh, see how it, see how it works. It's really, really cool. Um, thank you so much for being on my channel. Um, I'm really stoked to actually get this information and like rewatch this <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff that you, that you said that kind of like sparked some spark some interest in me so i'm really excited um as always guys if you haven't subscribed definitely subscribe hit that alert button and if you have any comments or suggestions leave those down in the comment box down below and if you like this type of interview give me a thumbs up i'm gonna try to get some more people on the channel that can shed some really awesome information to you guys um and check out my instagram at jelani the market check out my blog blog.jelani and thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video see ya